What's up, my Manic Mob? Mike the Manic Geek here. And with summer approaching, this feels like a very appropriate time to start talking about things like PC cooling. And in that light, uh, I have on hand Fractal Design's newest series of Venturi fans. Now, this is a new entry into the market for them, uh, but they're not new to fan design. They've been producing standalone fans uh, that also ship with their cases for some time now, uh, but this is their first uh, specifically airflow and static pressure design series of fans that creates a little bit of a departure uh, from what we've seen with their fans in the past. Uh, so I'm going to be taking them out of the box today, uh, giving you guys an overview of them, discussing some of the, the, the little niceties uh, that, come, uh, that come on these fans to help them do what they do, how they do. And then uh, I'll talk to you guys a little bit about my impressions on the fan and uh, what it was like to use them. Both fans come in 120 and 140 millimeter variants, with the contents of each box being slightly different. The high flow fan comes with the fan, case screws, and a low noise adapter, while the high pressure fan comes with the fan itself, of course, the same case screws, and a two-way pulse width modulated splitter. Now, the 140mm variants also come with adjustable corners that are easily removable to allow your 140mm fan to fit 120mm hole spacing for easier mounting on tower heat sinks. The cable is braided with nice black cable braiding, which terminates cleanly into the body of the fan itself, which uses a really nice, high-quality, gunmetal colored plastic that's going to blend in really well with your build. The fluid dynamic bearing also has this really nice metal finish sticker on it, uh, that catches light really well. Aerodynamic enhancements include notches at the base of each fan blade to reduce some of that wind noise, as well as some trip wires, which are aerospace inspired, to reduce wind turbulence even further. And now, let's take a listen and see what these fans sound like. All right, so we've taken a look at all the fans. Now let's uh, discuss what I did and didn't like about them. Because there's a couple of things I didn't like about them. You know, no, no company's perfect here. We'll start off with what I did like. What I do like about these fans is the very neutral color scheme that they use. This black and gunmetal finish, it's going gonna, it's gonna to meld well with damn near any system you put this in. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're going black or blue, black and red, all white, you know, this fan will seamlessly integrate into a, visually whatever system you throw it in. Uh, I really like the, uh, the stickers that they put over the bearing for, for, the, for the fan. It, it, looks, it looks metallic uh, in finish and it does have some thickness to it. It wouldn't surprise me if this actually is uh, uh, metallic. Uh, it's not magnetic. Uh, but it's it's an inc it's it, it's all in the little details with things like this that really help a product stand out. And especially if you um, like, I mentioned uh, in the the unboxing and overview, uh, you set this in a case where this is going to catch some of the lighting from LEDs or something like that. That's going to look really nice. Um, I really like how quiet they get. Not how quiet they are, but how quiet they get. Any fan at max speed is going to generate a fair amount of noise. I mean, let's face it, anything north of 1200 RPMs is going to have some noise associated with it. You know, even, even the nicest Noctua fans out there, once they're running at top speed, are going to make some noise. But, given that the airflow fans run at about 1400 RPMs, and the static pressure fans run at 1800 RPMs, and they still have um, a really tolerable uh, sound signature at full speed is pretty impressive. Uh, even more impressive is the way they undervolt. These fans get retardedly quiet once you, uh, once you start toning down the RPM on them. Um, <clears throat> I like and dislike the, the, the corner mounts, the, the corner rubber on these fans. I like them in the sense that if you're using them, uh, and, and we'll use the static pressure fan as an example here, if you're trying to mount them in a pole configuration in the roof of your case and trying to mount a radiator underneath it, or even if you're doing push-pull, 
Uh, those of you that have tried to work with that know how incredibly tedious a process that can be with the fans sliding around all over the place and the radiator uh, uh, threaded openings not lining up correctly. That can be very frustrating. But part of the upside of these rubber corners is that they actually grip onto uh, radiator screws pretty tightly to the point that you could set the four screws for the fan in the roof, and the fan will largely stay in place, <clears throat> which makes it very easy for you to line up all of the uh, all of the openings on the radiator to the fan, and uh, it just makes the install process a lot more painless than than it really should than you know it really should be. Um, the downside to that, though, and I'll, I'll go ahead and start transitioning into some of the things that I don't like here. The downside to that is that if you're trying to use these fans, and I'll transition to the airflow ones for an example, if you're trying to use this fan in an environment where to fasten it to your case you have to use a standard case screw, I might be a little concerned about uh, running the threads through the corners the wrong way, and uh, even more concerned over the rubber uh, failing after just a handful of reinstalls. I mean. You, you want your fans to be able to last the lifespan of, of the bearing, if, if at all possible. And having, having something like these rubber corners without even the benefit of a plastic sleeve on the inside of them to, to help give uh, the, the screws something else to bite into other than the rubber, uh, that I find a little concerning. I would like to see them change that in future revisions, to be honest with you, at least for the Airflow series of fans. The Static Pressure series of fans, I would say, could do without it because of things like what I mentioned before with radiator screws gripping the rubber really nicely and giving you uh, a way to hold the fan in place while you're lining up your radiator to fasten it to the fan. Now. Uh, another thing that I didn't like was specifically uh, regarding the, uh, the static pressure fan. The bearing on the static pressure fan makes, uh, and this is un unanimous between the 120 and 140 millimeter variant, um, but the bearing on the static pressure fan seems to produce uh, a bit of a, an electronic buzzing sound. Um, now, the nearest I can figure is that the reason the bearing makes a little bit more sound on this is because it is a higher RPM bearing, and you are dealing with a heavier fan. I mean, if you hold, you hold the static pressure fan first, and then you hold the airflow fan, the airflow fan is noticeably lighter. So this bearing is not only working harder in terms of top speed, but it's having to push more at that top speed. Now that being said, once you start turning down the RPMs on the fan, it gets exponentially quieter uh, at a very noticeable rate. And uh, at, up, at around 80% fan speed, honestly, this fan is very tolerable. Uh, matter of fact, when I installed it in a Define R5 just to see what would happen in an environment where you're dealing with uh, silence optimization in the case, the, the tone of the fan was taken down to the point that in order for me to hear it, I really had to have my head right against the case almost, like within a couple of inches. So as far as, as, far as sound is concerned, airflow fans are great for sound. These are great once you turn down the speed a little bit. Um, but really, as far as things that I didn't like about them, that's really about it. I mean, even the 140 millimeter fans have the consideration of giving you different mounting solutions for the rubber corners in the event that you're trying to mount the fan on something like, uh, like an NHD 15 or something, or, uh, or any sort of tower heat sink that uses the, those little metal wires to hook the fan into the heat sink. I think that's a great idea. I would love to see more case manufacturers give you that kind of flexibility when using your, when using your fans. Um, as I filmed the footage for these fans, I found myself comparing these more and more to uh, Corsair's line of airflow and static pressure uh, optimized fans. And considering that we're using Corsair's airflow fans in both of the cases in the office right now, and I'm using their static pressure fans in my fiance's rig, I would go for the Fractal Design fans over those Corsair fans any flippin' day of the week. 
they're quieter, they move more air, they're, they're, they, have, they use a more robust feeling design to them. I mean, the, these just feel more solid in the hand, just, just in comparison to Corsair's airflow and static pressure optimized fans. I mean, the, these just feel better to me in every way. Even manually spinning the bearing, um, it just, it feels nicer. It feels like a more premium product. Now, another thing that I did with these is I mounted, uh, I mounted an airflow fan from both camps in the Define R5, and I was sort of subjectively reaching my hand through the case and feeling more or less where I stopped feeling airflow. Uh, even at full speed, those Corsair airflow fans do, do not the mustard cut. They... Um, they air too much on the side of silence, I think, and even then they don't necessarily do the best job of it. Whereas Fractal Design's airflow fans, at max speed, I could feel these moving air almost straight through to the very back of the case. And at, with the low noise adapter installed on them, I could, feel, I could still feel air moving to maybe a quarter of the way down the motherboard. I mean, th these are very impressive fans. Uh, even, uh, and I'll show you guys some video footage here, even mounting the static pressure fan at lower speeds on a really constrictive radiator and uh, doing a paper test on it just to see how much air could flow through, these fans are very impressive. And these definitely warrant a strong consideration for your next build, whatever it may be. Um, I mean, even even throwing color matching to the wind, these are going to go in any computer that you could possibly build. I mean, the, the color scheme on these is so neutral, it's ridiculous. And I personally love that. Individual tastes may, bear, may vary. Um, I love the neutral look on these fans. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's going to do it for my, uh, for my overview and first impressions of the Fractal Design Venturi series of fans. Uh, do that thumbs up, thumbs down thing like you guys do. Uh, share the video if you thought this information was informative and if you feel like one of your friends needs to uh, consider these for their next build. Uh, also, be sure to subscribe. Uh, subscribing, sharing, interacting with the video, leaving comments, all that stuff helps me out a ton, guys. You, you, you ain't no. It's, it's a huge help. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for now. Uh, this is Mike the Manic Geek signing out. I'll catch you all next time.